All right, back on the Young Turks. Um, now, I promised you one other political ad, and uh, it's Joe Manchin, and he's fighting tough in West Virginia, and he's up in the polls, and, uh, and that's one of the few uh, bright spots for the Democrats in the country. He's running against John Racy, and he's going to uh, run an ad that's not playing. Uh, clip number 12. I'm Joe Manchin, and I approve this message. I've already been defeated three times. That's a pretty good message from West Virginia, I think. But I'm going to tell you this. I don't agree with minimum wage. I'm in the business of not providing jobs. I'm in the business of making money. We don't need the Department of Education. We need 1,000 laser systems put in the sky, and we need it right now. John Racy's ideas are crazy. Why am I running? Do I need this? <laughs> why am I running? What am I doing here? Look, he calls him crazy. It's awesome. Okay, you know why? Because he is. We need freaking laser beams in the sky. We need it right now. <laughs> well, all they're doing is using his own words. And it's not out of context. He really said all of those things, and he really meant all of those things. All right, so nice hard-hitting ad there. Well, unfortunately, when we speak of hard-hitting these days, we think of Rand Paul supporters. <laughs> and they didn't hit hard in the right ways. Uh, of course, there was the blow-up over a uh, move-on activist, Lauren Valley, uh, going to a Rand Paul event. She was going to put up a sign next to Rand Paul, and uh, a couple of Rand Paul volunteers uh, decided to stomp on her. And we showed you the video yesterday where they, of course, they uh, not only threw her to the ground, but then uh, stomped on her head, literally, quite literally. Uh, well, the guy uh, involved in that is Tim Prophet, and he's spoken to the press, but since he's... Uh, not exactly what you would call courageous, when throwing down a young 23-year-old woman and stopping on her head, he seems like a tough guy. But when they asked him to go on camera, he said, no, no, I want to get my message out, but I want to hide my face. Uh, but you're going to understand why when you hear his message. He's going to blame her for the problem. He's not kidding. Let's watch this. Clip number five. When we spoke to Prophet, he asked that his face not appear on camera. But he wanted to defend himself. She's a professional at what she does, and uh, I think when all the facts come out, I think people will see that uh, she was the one that uh, initiated the whole thing. Prophet claims he believed Paul was in danger from the woman and that he acted to protect the candidate, but the campaign has condemned Prophet's actions. I put my foot on her, and I, and I did push her down at the very end. And I told her to stay down. I actually put my foot on, on her to, I couldn't bend over uh, because I have issues with my back. Lexington police began an assault investigation identifying Prophet as a suspect. Well, I'll just say it. If, if the police had done what they were supposed to do, it would never happen. I don't think it's that big of a deal. And when asked if he would apologize to Valley, I would like for her to apologize to me, to be honest with you. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. She should apologize to you for you stomping on her head. I, I, I literally don't get the logic, but I, you know, I'm sure that, as we've said many times, they don't give a damn about logic. And you know what? The next time I crunch somebody's head with my foot, I'm going to demand an apology too, you know, because sometimes that reverberates to my back and I got back problems. And how did you like that excuse? I got back problems. That's why I couldn't bother to, what, lean down and punch her? So that I had to use my foot instead. Well, well, I didn't know that. Well, then I guess you're right. And he said, uh, it's also the police's fault. I, and again, I'm like, wait a minute. Should the police have stopped you earlier from committing a violent assault on her? Or should they have committed the violent assault on her? <laughs> okay. And he thought Rand Paul was going to be in danger from that young 23-year-old girl that you saw, you saw it on the tape. Did she look like she was a menacing danger? That, and that was the danger not neutralized when you had already, you and your friends had thrown her to the ground and had her arms behind her back? It was not neutralized, and then you had to neutralize it further by stomping on her head. But, but, you know, to be fair to Tim, he's got a bad back, so I think, you know, that girl, she should go ahead and apologize to him. You know, fair is fair. But he believes it. That's his mindset. He went on television to say she should apologize to him. Well, how are you going to reason with somebody like that? You're not going to reason with him. He thinks that his force is always justified. She had it coming. Look, these guys are scaring me, man. 
Conway uh, had a press conference uh, and they had another supporter who came out and said that he was uh, manhandled uh, by uh, some other Paul, Paul supporters there as well. There's no videotape of that. You know, I, I make of that what you will. Uh, and it, but it's not only is it a bad scene, not only is it happening over and over, uh, but they're totally unapologetic about it. Okay. So it, it's like when Harry Whittington apologized to Dick Cheney for shooting him in the face. You remember that? <laughs> Cheney didn't apologize. Whittington came out and said, I am so sorry for the problems I've caused the vice president by getting shot in the face by him. Okay, that's, that's the logic of the right in this country. All right, now I said it's happening over and over again. You think, no, oh, come on, really? What's the last one? Oh, no, not again. Another one. Another act of violence to protect Republicans. Now, this is happening in Virginia. Uh, Representative Eric Cantor is running against Rick Vaughn. Rick Vaughn has uh, some supporters who are going to go to a coffee shop and uh, because Eric Cantor is supposed to show up there to speak. They've got signs, etc. The coffee shop owner doesn't like it. Now, those people bought coffee. They're in his shop perfectly legally. He says they were talking to one another. Wait a minute, let me get this right. It is wrong to talk to one another at a coffee shop after you've already bought your coffee. Are you, are you saying this with a straight face? So it doesn't matter. They call the cops. Okay? And the cops come and they decide that they're going to arrest the guy involved. The guy involved is John Taylor. You're about to see him in the video now. And he says, what are you arresting me for? And of course, they're going to say, oh, well, I don't care. Uh, since you are questioning me, you're resisting arrest. And here we go, more violence. Clip number six. And it's his son taping it. John Taylor's son. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. You're going to get sprayed. Put your hands behind your back. Dad? Do it now. Do it. Stop resisting. It's not a legal arrest. Here comes uh, Mr. Enthusiastic Cop. He can't if you're holding him. Ow, ow, you oh, god damn you. You just fucked up my arm. I can't believe you guys did this. I can't believe you did this. You have to stop resisting. Uh, what how was I resisting? Put your hand behind your back. Sir. Get this on camera and get them a Sir, you have no right to block my camera. Excuse me. I have, I have no right to cuss at you. I never cussed. Make up any. Be careful when you get me up. You twisted the fuck out of my arm. Sir, you're going to say you want to talk to me? Fucking Republican asshole. Hey, that's not a nice thing. Hey, guys. These guys with the cameras out here. Are you right? Let's go. Get the guy with the camera out of you. <laughs> See, uh, because the guy who just got slammed to the ground at some point said a couple of curses, so his son is not allowed to tape. Uh, yeah, if you slam me, if that guy slammed me to the ground, I might curse too. Remember, the original offense was having coffee and speaking at a coffee shop. Okay, they were worried that when Eric Cantor showed up, they might say something. God forbid we should have a democracy. Now, look, don't get me wrong. I hate it when people scream to the point where other people can't speak. I don't like it when they throw pies in the face of Ann Coulter. I don't like it when they shout down people like Ann Coulter or anyone else, okay? But these people didn't do that. Eric Cantor hadn't even come yet. They were talking to one another. They had a sign. I mean, and then to prevent their speech by arresting them, and then if they don't like being arrested for no damn reason, slam them to the ground with a guy that looked to be about 580 pounds, and then say, okay, as you're resisting arrest, I'm going to add that charge to it. And why is it only at Republican events? George Allen in 2006 did it to Mike Stark. Rand Paul supporters just did it. Eric Cantor uh, supporters, and, and apparently the cops were willing, participating here. Joe Miller handcuffing the reporter. Uh, when one of his supporters said the reporter didn't do anything wrong, he was asking aggressive questions. He might have been rude, but he has a right to ask questions. Apparently you don't if you're at a Republican event. 
And remember back in the Bush and Cheney years, when if you showed up with the wrong t-shirt, or a cop, or not even a cop, somebody working security saw the wrong bumper sticker on your car. All these things happened. They threw you out. And sometimes they arrested you. And sometimes it was violent. I thought we had a democracy. I thought we had freedom of speech and freedom of the press. Unless, of course, you're going to speak against a Republican. In which case, well, you got to get slammed to the ground and arrested for three different things. Sick, man, and it's un-American. All right, look, believe it or not, I have more crazy Republican uh, news. I, they just, they outdo themselves. If you don't believe me, come back. I'm going to just, all I'm going to do is quote them. Young Turks. Concourse Hotel, that's where we're holding that uh, atheist agnostic uh, rally. I might show them the rant I did on Dylan Radigan today. Because uh, that was some serious agnostic work there. Well, it wasn't. It was actually secular, which is totally different. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, okay, so uh, October uh, 30th, that night, Saturday at 8.30, I'm speaking at the Congress Hotel for the Freedom from Religion Foundation, uh, but that night at 8.30 at the bar, at literally a place called The Bar, mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you want to get together, we're going to do a little TYT get together. Okay? That sounds fun. Oh. Andrew Napier will be there. You guys get to have all the fun. Oh, we have so much fun. Okay, <laughs> and we'll get smashed, and I'll miss my flight in the morning. Okay? Mm -hmm. So fun for everybody. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, well, let's move forward. Yes, let's do so. Uh, while you were gone, Ben and I talked about the French riots. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I came out strong in favor for them. I think that uh, the French protesting is a very good thing. It's a very positive thing. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, the reason why uh, the French are protesting right now is because the government is uh, making plans to um, increase the retirement age from 60 to 62. And if you want to receive a full pension, and I, I, I want to really emphasize that, the age will go from 65 to 67. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're raising uh, the retirement age. Right. And, and the French people, not going to have it. Okay. Now, uh, Anna's always been on the record as being pro-riot, and so she's being consistent here. Uh, I'm not pro-riot. I'm pro-democracy. Mm. Don't it. Okay. okay. No, no, by the way, just all kidding aside. Look, I, my guess is that you're animated about it because you think, hey, at least they're doing something. Yes! Yes! No, okay, no, no, no. Who said that? <laughs> okay. So we, we discussed this story, and the reason why I'm bringing this back to you guys now is because... I read the best column written this week. Can I guess which site it was on? Alternate. <laughs> okay, no, 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 but it is. It, it is a very good piece, and it was written by uh, Mike Whitney. He is a writer for Counterpunch. Alternate took that article and, and republished it on their site. Okay. Okay, so he expresses my feelings exactly, almost word for word in this article. I mm -hmm. love it. And um, I want to read you just one tiny snippet of it that I 100% believe in. He says, the amount of freedom that any nation enjoys is directly proportionate to the amount of blood its people spilled fighting for the state. Um, okay. And so the reason why, look, the reason why this is important is because we're getting robbed in the U.S., Okay, day in, day out, we're getting robbed. I don't see any riots. I don't see any protesters. I don't see any political action. I see a bunch of people whining about how Obama's not giving us what we want. Mm -hmm. Okay? We need to fight for what we want. Look at this, man. Che Kasparian. Okay? No, but she's not playing, man. And by the way, she's had clenched fists like at least on three occasions so far. Like, yes! <laughs> riots! <laughs> okay, no, no, okay, seriously, seriously. Okay, look. I don't want people getting hurt. That's crazy, right? I know Anna doesn't want people getting hurt. Correct. But, like, mass people in the streets is, of course, exactly what democracy is about. And if you don't like, you know, your pension being cut, well, of course, you should be angry about that. Uh, and you should take to the streets. That, I mean, we built that tradition, mm -hmm. right? And, and so we should be happy to see uh, France doing it. Again, like, the French take it further. They, one of the, some of the signs also encourage sabotage. I wouldn't go that far, okay, but, but hey, man, they're pissed. At least they got blood uh, running through their veins, right? Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, Social Security might get cut. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, sir. 
Seriously, we have to do something. Uh, but look, look, that deficit commission is going to come out at, after the 2010 elections. Mm -hmm. And it's all, I'm going to tell you right now what's going to happen, and then you can come back and look at this video later and say, okay, you got it exactly right. Obama will, in an effort to reach out to Republicans, when the Deficit Commission comes out and says we should cut Social Security or raise your retirement age, almost the same exact issue as in, as in France, Obama will say, fantastic, I'm going to reach out to Republicans and agree we should cut Social Security. Mm -hmm. Aren't I so moderate and centrist? What, 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 you guys are complaining? I'm being so moderate. I be people elected Republicans. I'm responding to what people did. No, look, we can't depend on Obama. Obama's not listening to us. No one's listening to us, okay? Yes. And, and that's another thing that was written in this article that I 100% believe in. Um, Self-organization to meet the need, uh, take ownership of our struggles without the mediation of those who claim to speak for workers. Obama claimed to speak for us. He's not speaking for us. He's looking out for himself, and he's looking out for his own image as a moderate. No, we can't have it. Oh, look, if you don't believe us, let's see what happens with that deficit commission. Well, let's see, okay? Mm -hmm. And no proof will be in the pudding, okay? And by the way, there are some uh, people that are fighting back. Uh, for example, the PCCC has organized, I think they're up to like 287 members of Congress who are like, no, we're not going to cut Social Security. No, that's uh, off the table. I know they started with 200, and they're well above 200. That might be 247. Uh, and they're going around, planning ahead, and say, getting people on the record saying, we, can, we will not let you cut Social Security. Now, they will paint it as, just be reasonable. Uh, come on, these are tough times, and everybody's got to take a hit. Well, how come the bankers didn't take a hit? Exactly. How come they crashed the economy, and they're now making record profits and taking home record bonuses? How come they didn't take a hit at all? Mm -hmm. At all, right? And Robert Reich wrote a great article about this. He's former labor secretary under Bill Clinton. He said, you know, everybody's always saying about how there's no money, there's no money. Oh, too bad, there's no money left. He said, well, first of all, of course, as I've said all along, Social Security has a giant $2.5 trillion surplus. Mm -hmm. You just robbed it, right? So there was the money, you robbed it, right? So why don't you give it back? Number two, here's how you can raise money. Raise the top income bracket by 2%. Mm -hmm. 2% and you're all fine on Social Security, okay? So there is the money. Mm -hmm. You just don't want to take it from the top 1%. You want to take it from the rest of us. You know, I don't know if you've talked about this during the political hour. I'm sure you have. But um, Mike Norton from Harvard's Business School just recently noted that the top 20% of the U.S. own 85% of the wealth, while the bottom 40% either own zero wealth or are in debt. Mm -hmm. Okay? And there's this huge class warfare in the United States that people are ignoring. That's a huge issue that I, I just, for some reason, I don't understand why people are not up in arms. That 40% is me. <laughs> I'm in that 40%. Like, we got to do something about it. We, got, we can't allow this to continue happening. And it, what Anna's referring to is what I talk about all the time. Yeah, there is class warfare. It's the Koch brothers and the billionaires, and they were in Aspen last June. They're going to be in Palm Springs this January. Uh, about I think about the 72, some of the richest people in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, New York Times found out about the meeting, found out about their notes and how they're trying to keep it secret. And they are declaring war on the middle class and they say, no, we have to keep as much money as possible. We have to lower the taxes. We have to lower the estate tax. We have to make sure we don't share our wealth with anybody, mm -hmm. right? Even if they helped us to build it. Mm -hmm. Even if they bailed us out. No, we don't share it, okay? We keep it, we keep it, we hoard it, right? And then if you're not angry about that, you're not in the streets like the French are, well, you're a sucker. And so I think we say in unison here, mm -hmm. Viva la France! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, at least they're trying. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see what happens here. And I'm very curious about that because that steamroller's headed this way. And, uh, and when it comes, will we just lie down and roll over or will we fight back? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that one. But the most interesting thing about this entire situation with France versus U.S. when it comes to protesting, right, is why, why don't we have that type of mentality? Why won't we take to the streets? Why won't we all strike? Right now, France is not functioning correctly, okay? Mm -hmm. The oil workers aren't working there. People are having a hard time with transportation because they have no fuel for transportation. I mean, things are chaotic in France right now. And as scary as it sounds, that's what we need in the U.S. We need that chaos. We need to scare the politicians. Well, look. And I'm not saying, look, and I want to clarify this again. I'm not saying that I'm looking for people to get violent or for people to get hurt. I, that's not what I'm advocating. Okay, but what I want is for people to stand up for 
what they need for their rights. And, and in the article, it doesn't say you wield a baton. It says you're willing to have the courage to take a hit from a baton, mm -hmm. okay, when the police come to crunch you, okay, and, and they will, and they did in France, right? So now let me add two things to that. One, uh, we've discussed this before, in during the civil rights era, uh, part of the reason we got civil rights legislation is because of brave uh, people like Martin Luther King who preached nonviolence but got people in the streets, mm -hmm. right? But uh, another part of the reason is, if you read the real history of it, is that uh, Lyndon Johnson got scared because there were riots in the streets. Uh, and not Martin Luther King's protest, which was enormously helpful, right? But also real riots. And, they, and he went and talked to the Democratic senators who were against it and said, look, I don't care if you lose your seats. This country's in danger. We've got to fix this because this thing's going to blow, mm -hmm. okay? And so then all of a sudden, civil rights legislation passed, okay? Hey, why is it only the Tea Party people who are pro-corporate America who are protesting? Okay, I mean, up and at them. I know, look, I think, unfortunately, people are not going to get motivated until oh, it's almost too late. Until they go, what? I don't have my pension anymore? Or I don't have the same pension as I used to? Or what, now I can't retire at 65? Or, or 67, actually? <laughs> okay, i got to wait till 70 or 72? or 89 or 97, I'm never going to get to retire. But at that point, they've already pulled the rug out. Right. You know, and we're trying to let people know about it. So, uh, you know, I'm right there with you, Anna. All right, let's move on from this topic. Okay. All right, uh, there was another alternate article I read today. Yeah. That, uh, I know. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's great. I love alternate. <laughs> this is, show has become one big giant plug for alternate. I know, I know. Uh, we got to... I won't name the source from now on. No, no, you can <laughs> name the source. It doesn't I'm matter. Just kidding. No, no, no. But seriously, um, they always have interesting articles. But this one was written by a gentleman by the name of Aaron Goveya. I might be pronouncing that wrong. But um, he and his wife. No, it sounded just right. Huh? It sounded it? just right. Oh, okay. Are you no, being sarcastic? Oh, of course I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> you said Aaron Goveya. I might be getting that wrong. <laughs> you think? <laughs> okay, we might use this on YouTube, so let's rewind. Okay, no, 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 rewind. Just calm down. Just tell the story. No, okay, so um, a gentleman by the name of Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to do with her, man. <laughs> from the Good Men Project. He and his wife had to make a difficult decision, okay? His wife was four months pregnant uh, with a baby that uh, was diagnosed with mermaid syndrome. And that's when... Um, the baby's two feet are fused together, okay? Mm -hmm. The baby also did not have kidneys or a bladder, mm -hmm. okay? So doctors said, look, your baby is likely to die. Mm -hmm. So it, it, we advise you to have an abortion. So they had to make that difficult decision, and uh, when they were going to the abortion clinic to have the procedure done, uh, of course, there were right-wing protesters right outside, judging them, yelling at them, making them feel even more terrible than they already did, okay? Yeah. And so he got mad. And uh, if I was him, I'd have been only a hundred times madder. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think he was relatively self-composed here. And he went out and he said, "I'm going to tape them. And if they're going to challenge us, I'm going to challenge them." So let's watch the tape and then come back and give you some more details. Excuse me. Wondering what it is you're actually hoping to accomplish here. Not invisible. Well, I'll tell you what, I just walked in with my wife. We were trying to have another kid, and you know what? One in 100,000 fatal demise, a congenital deformity. So you're yelling at my wife for doing nothing wrong than having a nearly dead baby inside her, and that's what you're going to do? Oh, so that's not what you're here for? It's what you just did. You're sorry? Do you think maybe you want to ask before? You're just yelling at random people, and you have no idea what you're doing to them. And you know what? It's despicable. It is despicable. Come to what place? Because of people like you, no one wants to perform these anymore. Because you make people who are already upset on the worst day of their lives feel even worse. So there's really not a whole lot of places to go anymore. My wife should be cared for in a hospital. She was cared for in a hospital. This is affiliated with a hospital. Well, guess what? There is a time-sensitive nature on this, and I don't want her delivering a stillborn baby, which is what would happen if we waited anymore. Okay, there was a medical necessity in there. Are you I sure am. 
You know what? Oh, what? Oh, you want to stand out in public, but you don't want to make public statements? How hypocritical. Have you ever That's seen nice. An aborted baby? I have seen an aborted baby. I've seen pictures, thanks to people like you, holding up severed heads of fetuses, because that's really effective. How many women commit suicide after There are a lot. People commit suicide for a lot of reasons. Love thy brother. Thank you. Love thy brother. Yeah. You know what? You people think you're helping. Why don't you go help with at-risk kids? Why don't you try and stem the problem beforehand? Instead, you're going to sit out here with your stupid signs. Congratulations. You have adopted children. Fine. What are you doing out here making people feel awful about themselves? We are killing a million healthy babies. Are you no, I'm just angry with you, because you are the lowest common denominator right now. You are a waste of human... Oh yeah, I call the cops? I'm standing on public property and I'm not doing anything wrong. You're yelling at people, so I feel that I can talk. I know my rights inside and out. I'm sure you do. Yeah, I do. Congratulations. You're, you're a real winner. Both of you. You're an angry father. Oh, I'm an angry father? <laughs> I sure am. Angry at you and with good reason. Lowest common denominator. Oof, man, first of all, let's talk about the irony. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to be on camera. You're in a public street with a sign yelling at people as they're walking into a clinic, right? Mm -hmm. what, what, oh, and oh, well, don't yell at me. Oh, uh, you're allowed to yell at a poor woman who's about to go through one of the most difficult times in her life, mm -hmm. but when you get challenged, oh, you don't like that. Right. And then she threatened to call the cops. Are you kidding me? You're on public t uh, ground. He's on public ground. You're you were just yelling at him. Doing the exact same thing that you're going to call the cops on him for. It, because they, that's the way they think. No, I'm right. I don't give a damn what you think. Okay, and I'm going to get the cops on my side. And luckily they didn't. And when they came out of the clinic uh, after the procedure was over, those women had run away. Right. Oh, look at what happens when you get challenged. It's easy when somebody is in a bad spot. And they're coming in, and you feel like, oh, I got them, they're weak, and they can't attack back. And you scream in their face. Mm -hmm. But when you challenge a little bit, you run, and you hide, right? And you don't want to be on camera, because you're embarrassed about what you're doing, because what you're doing is despicable. Right. You know, and Erin makes a really great point about how one of, one of her arguments was, oh, you, do you know how many women commit suicide after they have an abortion? Well, do you think you're making it any better for them when you're yelling at them on the most difficult day of their lives? And also, they, they're just making this crazy assumption that women, like, get pregnant and have abortions on purpose. Like, it's not a fun day for women. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's not like they do it because they get some sort of rise out of it. They get some thrill out of it. It's a very tough decision. It's a very hard decision. And to point fingers at her and yell at her and make a spectacle of it, you're probably making her feel a million more times worse. You know, Aaron at the end wrote about how they had struggled with this for so long because they wanted a kid so bad, and they'd already named her, and they'd named her Alexandra, and then find out that she doesn't, she's not going to have a bladder or a kidney. She doesn't have one, mm -hmm. so she can't survive, right? And then you yell at them and, and try to make them feel bad to the point where they didn't, thank God, they, they fought back. But some of those women who feel so bad commit suicide, and then you brag about how they commit suicide, it's just, it's beyond repulsive, okay? You know, these are the same people who claim that they don't want the government in their personal lives. And then they will be at a different rally with a sign that says, don't tread on me. Are you effing kidding me? If that was my kid, first of all, i got to be honest with you, I, that would rip me apart, obviously, mm -hmm. but I don't think it would be a difficult decision. Of course you need to have an abortion. It doesn't have a bladder or a kidney. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Of course you need to. And then somebody's going to come and try to judge me over it? Oh, the anger they got from him, times a thousand, man. You're lucky I wasn't there. I mean, I'd have lost my stuff. You know you've seen it when I lose all my stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to come at me and hold up signs, etc. Get the hell out of my life. And look at what this country's about. It's about individual choice, liberty, and freedom. You don't get to decide for me. We get to make our own decisions. And when it comes to other issues, that's what you claim to be in favor of. Mm -hmm. But you're the world's largest hypocrites. And you're disgusting. I think my views on that are fairly clear. All right, let's take a break, Young Turks.